Hello, today's December 8th. It's noon here on the East Coast in the U.S. And the focus of this video is going to be around the concept of implied volatility in Vanna and how it played into the way that we saw the market moving over the last several days. If you're interested in sort of our real-time thoughts of the pullback in this rally, we've done a bunch of videos that you can see on the YouTube channel. And then obviously if you're a subscriber, you can see all of our daily notes going back to January 2018. You can see how we laid out our expectations and forecasts. So here we have a chart of the S&P over the last several days. And as you can see, there was a, a rather sharp drawdown into the 4,500 area. And during this time, we went on Bloomberg and the like talking about the idea that this was a market slingshot. And what we meant by that is that if you were to raise implied volatility, that is essentially energy. It's like pulling back the band on a slingshot such that when you let that band go, that implied volatility will release and it will lead the market going higher. And key to that analogy is this concept of Vanna. So let's talk about the VIX quickly. We're going to talk about the VIX as a barometer of implied volatility. If you look at the VIX, we had the VIX up here at 35. Now, the VIX has been high for this entire past year and really since the COVID crisis or COVID crash. And it's been elevated because obviously of the concerns of the disease and the like. But we really want to focus on the fact that VIX over 30, if you look pre-COVID crash, syncs with some times in which there was real turmoil in the market, namely Volmageddon and the December 18th crash. So in December of 2018, the market dropped over 10% in the month and the VIX hit 35. So when you put that into context of today with the S&P going down only you know 3 4% maybe from all-time highs, a VIX of 35 is really pretty rich. That's not to say that the market couldn't have crashed lower and realized sort of a 35 VIX, but we just thought that Based on the positioning, we saw that that VIX was too elevated. One way to tell is to use the rule of 16. And basically what you can do is you can divide the VIX by 16, and that roughly equals 1.8. So 1.8 tells us what the VIX is pricing in for a given SBX move. Again, so a 30 VIX translates to roughly an anticipation of 1.8% daily movements in the S&P 500. So, you know, if we were to look at the actual S&P movement over those last, say, five days or even month, there wasn't very many 1.8% moves in here, particularly down around 4,500, where we hit a big support level due to a lot of open interest. And kind of what's also interesting here is that the big, I believe the biggest move was the 2% rally we had just a day or two back. So, what does Vanna have to do with all of this? What does Vanna have to do with implied volatility? Why did we think that slingshot analogy would play out like it did? To discuss this topic, we're going to flip over to this chart. And what's important to know is that the definition of Vanna is the change in delta for a given change in implied volatility. Think of it as when implied volatility moves around, hedging ratios change. Now, what we've plotted here is a 4,600 put in blue with a 15% implied vol and a 4,600 put with a 30% implied vol. We're gonna assume that you understand the concepts of delta neutral and implied volatility, uh, at least sort of have a rudimentary understanding of those concepts. If not, you may wanna pause and go check out some other videos or explanations of, of those topics. So let's say that with the market here at 4,700, that's where it is roughly today, this is the SPX on the X axis and on the Y axis we have delta. If I was to purchase this put option today, it would have roughly a 40 delta. And when I buy a put option, put options have negative deltas, right? So that basically means that I am short the market, again, negative delta option, and the market maker who sold me this option is going to be long 40 deltas. That means if the market goes down, they lose money. Not good, if the market goes up, wonderful, they feel happy, but Market makers want to be delta neutral, right? So what do they do? Well, they would sell stock. They would sell 40 deltas worth of stock. That's great. Now, if the market does nothing, no movement in the underlying, but implied volatility goes from 30 down to 15, you can see we shift lower in on the delta y-axis here. So the option where it was a 40 delta is now a 30 delta roughly. So what does that mean? 
Well, the market maker has too many short hedges on now, right? They're exposed now. They're overexposed to the downside because they're short 40 shares of stock against an option that now only has 30 deltas. So you can infer what's going to happen next. They need to add 10 shares or 10 deltas to get themselves to delta neutral. So they're going to buy these 10 deltas back. So what happens if you imagine that there are millions of put options in the S&P 500, not just this 14600 put, there are literally millions across different expirations and different strikes. Well, that's gonna push the market higher, right? If, if this happens and dealers who are net short puts start buying back short hedges, you can see how that would have the effect of pushing the market higher. Now, what happens when the market goes up? Well, forget changing implied volatility. When the market goes up, the delta of a put option obviously goes down. So not only do we have the Vanna concept of implied vol dropping, but the idea of gamma, wherein dealers have to buy back shares because the underlying price is going higher. Now that in turn actually helps to lower implied volatility when the market rallies. So you get this compounding effect of the market goes up, implied volatility comes down, dealers buy back more shares, which causes the market to go higher, which causes dealers to need to buy back more shares. It's this feedback loop, you know, that that reflexive, reflexively works on itself. And that's not to say too that there are new traders going to come in and say, oh no, uh, this 4,600 put I have, the market is not going to crash anymore because of a new vaccine or a change in Fed policy or whatever it is. And when people close puts, then suddenly, you know, a dealer who had this 4,600 put at a 30 implied vol, if suddenly this option gets closed out, right, then I'm going to go from a 40 delta on this option to zero. So now I got to buy back 40 deltas. And furthermore, if someone comes in and says, oh, look at this implied vol, I think that this put should not be worth 30 implied vol, but it should be worth 15 implied vol. I'm going to short this thing. Then suddenly market makers end up long puts in this case, right? Which means that they can further cover more shares. So you can see how that feedback loop can set in motion and how Vanna kind of intertwines with Gamma and some of these other options Greeks to, to, to force buying higher. Now, while we're here, we just want to mention this concept of charm, which syncs with these two ideas of Gamma and Vanna as well. In this gray option, all we've done is we've kept the implied vol at 15, but we've changed the days to expiration. So we went from 30 days to expiration down to 10, just to illustrate what happens. So if I'm sitting here today with the market at 4,700 and nothing happens, again, implied vol is the same. Over 20 days, the delta is going to drop from roughly, let's call it 35 down to no, just under 20. So what does that mean? Well, now the dealers have to buy back shares equivalent uh, Delta is equivalent to the gap that you can see here. So time in a market that has a lot of put options like the S&P is going to create a creep higher, right? The decay factor is going to create this creep higher in the market. Now, this is pertinent in particular because the 1217 expiration has uh, 3 million puts tied to it. So there's a lot of decay over these next couple of days, and we have the... Uh, the Fed on Wednesday, 12:15. So that's going to keep implied volatility elevated just a little bit, right? But once the Fed comes out, assuming it doesn't spook the market, that just leads to a straight drop in implied vol, which is oftentimes why if the Fed doesn't do anything to upset the apple cart, so to speak, you can start a rally because of these concepts here, both time decay, which accelerates as we get closer to 12:17, and then implied vol coming down. So we hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Send us an email at Spot Gamma or hit us up at Spot Gamma on Twitter. Thanks.